right, Shannon. What's your reaction to this latest development? I'm not surprised. This is what we know, Skip, and let me, let, I don't want to follow and see if you agree with me. What we've learned from Aaron Rodgers since this vaccination is that Aaron Rodgers likes to misspeak the truth. <laughs> and then he'll play the victim. <laughs> because what he told Pat McAfee, he said but he wished the Packers would have had more direct conversation with him about moving on. They basically started shopping him behind his back. Yep. He said there had been no conversation between he and the Packers. Pat McAfee should have followed up. Did the Packers reach out to you? Mm -hmm. You see what Aaron does? He does a great job of not boxing himself in. There had been no communication, but it was because he would not return their call. Aaron Rodgers just think you're slick, but you can't be slick to a can of oil. That's me, because I'm slicker than slick. <laughs> oh, boy, this joker, who he think he's smart? You see, he always thinks he's the smartest guy in the room. He will always do a great job of, Skip, of not boxing himself in. I'm immunized. Mm -hmm. mm. Aaron. Immunization, does that mean you're vaccinated? You took the jab, you took the poke? I'm, it's wordplay. Mm. He didn't say he wasn't vaccinated, he said he's immunized. Mm. They read, they leapt to the conclusion, if you're immunized, that means you're vaccinated. No, that's not what that means. Mm. And he knew that's not what it meant. He said, well, I was waiting on them to follow up. Pat McAfee never followed up. There had been no communication. Aaron, did they reach out to you? Then he would have had to say yay or nay. Mm -hmm. Brian Gutekind said, look, after, after numerous attempts to try to reach out to Aaron with no return, we then reached out to his representative. Then it was informed to us that he wanted to be traded. Mm -hmm. You see, I did that. It's yeah. He played a victim. Oh, you know, they were shopping me behind my back. I just wish there was more transparency. That's what I wish for, too. Yeah. I wish you would be transparent. And when someone is trying to do something, with the, I can't wait. Because I want to hear him say, did the Packers try to, when they get when he gets to New York, I want him to ask, did the Packers ever try to reach out to you, Darren, to see what direction that you wanted to go in and give you an indication of the direction that they wanted to go in? Because mm -hmm. I want to hear what he have to say, see how he weasel and wiggle his way out of this one. Because I believe Brian Gutekind. Mm -hmm. I believe they reached out. Mm -hmm. And then Aaron, doing, in typical Aaron Rodgers fashion, yep. Skip, in any relationship, at some point in time, People, the other party will get tired of your bull jive. Yeah. If they tell you something, then hit, listen. Mm. They got tired of Aaron bull jives. Him waffling, I don't know. It's going to be short. You know, I, you know the, <laughs> the old pickup truck out there it might not crank tomorrow, but me and my old hound, we going to yeah, go for a ride. <laughs> he do that all the time, Skip. Yeah. And the Green Bay Packers were tired of it. Mm. They're like, we're not going through they had been going through it for they, and Skip, they had been going through it for four years. Mm -hmm. One thing, you know, he was upset. They a lot of people wanted me off. They had written me off. They didn't see this. Mm -hmm. And then when they took uh, uh Jordan Love and he was ticked off again. And he was they was he was so ticked off that he gladly accepted that three year hundred fifty million dollar deal, didn't he, Skip? Mm -hmm. But he wasn't that mad. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised by anything that Brian Gudekin said yesterday. And unfortunately, I believe. You know, unfortunately, fortunately, I believe everything that he said, every everything. single thing, every single thing. So I started saying back in 2007 <laughs> on national TV, this guy is a master media manipulator. He is often careless with the truth when it benefits him to be careless with the truth. He sort of ducks and dodges around the truth when it benefits him. Right which is why I loved every word that came out of Gutekind's mouth yesterday because he basically went scorched earth on Aaron Rodgers and put every ball right back in his court yep. by, I, I don't know how many ways you can call a man a liar without actually Same using the word liar, yeah. Yeah. but he did. Yes. And he said, I don't want to put this on anybody. Yeah, you do, because you're putting it on him and then you put him on him and him and him and him and him. Right. And my favorite line from the March 15th appearance of Aaron Rodgers on the, what's it called, Bad McAfee Bad. show. I wish that in the beginning of the offseason that there had been the conversation because I, I love direct communication. Yeah, what? Yes it is. You want to talk about LOL? That's yeah. it right there. That's a big LOL. Yeah. For See, me. that's what you call misspeaking the truth. Yeah. My grandma said, boy, you, <laughs> no, that's a lie. <laughs> that ain't no this speaking no truth. That's okay. a flat out lie. But you're right though, Skip. There wasn't any communication mm -hmm. because you would return their call or text messages. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, Skip, he didn't lie. Yeah. There was no communication. Okay. Then he says, Aaron Rodgers on the McAfee show, I came out of the darkness, his darkness retreat, and I saw the light. 
and I realized, wait a second, they don't want me anymore. No, no, you you never even talked to them. You decided you didn't want them Thank anymore. You. Because Thank you. Because Goodkin said, we were informed by his representatives he wanted to go to the Jets. Thank you. Okay, well, well again, what do I call Aaron Bleepin Rogers? He is the ultimate blame deflector, finger pointing blame deflector. Well, this is the all time blame deflection. Don't don't look at me. Don't Put blame me. It's their fault. Yeah. They don't want me. Uh, well, they don't want you now, right. but but I, I think they probably did want you in right. the beginning. We they were open. A, we could have had a conversation. Yeah. yeah. This is what we're thinking. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you're thinking. Are you retiring or what? Because, Skip, we never know. It's kind of hard to build a roster when you're starting quarterback. I might retire. I might not retire. I don't know if I got this many months in me or that many years yeah. in me. So it got to be redundant for them. And it's mm -hmm. like, okay, let's have this conversation sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the one thing Gudikins did yesterday was, even though he called out Aaron Rodgers, he he also outed himself because he basically said, "We are completely and utterly done." So there's no yeah. more negotiating room in yeah. there about maybe, maybe not. No, 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 no. Okay, day. it's done. Yeah. And the other news of the day at the league meetings, the owners' meetings, was that. There was some thawing in the negotiation between Packers and Jets that now it's starting to look more and more like Gudikins, and he had acknowledged he's backing off the 13th overall pick. Yeah, he pick will never get that. He's not going to get it. <laughs> yeah. The Jets recently acquired a second, yeah. second round pick. So that should be on the table. Yeah, you can get and that. There are all you can get one of them. You ain't getting both. Them. Okay, but there's speculation. A lot of Florio wrote about it. Several people wrote about it. Yahoo wrote about it. Charles Robinson that that the thought is that the deal on the table is the hard two this year mm -hmm. and then a two next year with conditions on it that depending how Aaron Bleepin plays as a Jet, it could go to a one. But, but you're going to have to put some conditions on right. it that would make it, he's got to make the Pro Bowl or what I don't no. know what the condition would be or they got to win. No, you got to get, yeah, go to the Super Bowl or the yeah, championship whatever, game. Yeah. Something like that. Because I want right. to make it more, I want to make it difficult. Okay that it could go to a one. That's the kind of deal that needs to get made. And everybody's sort of gut feeling after yesterday back and forth is that it's going to get done in the next two or three days. Well, it needs to get done right. for the sake of the league and the schedule right. and all the above. Okay, so the other interesting angle, where does this leave the Packers? Because it did catch my eye and ear that Andy Reid was asked about Jordan Love. Right. I don't like the question exactly that a reporter asked him because the question was, what did you think about Jordan Love in that quarter in that game that he played against you two years ago? Well, he didn't just play a quarter. He played the, the whole, whole game. game. I think the reporter was confusing what he did, what Jordan Love did at Philly, Philadelphia. Correct. Because that was quarter-ish. I yes, don't know exactly yes, how long it was. Right, yeah. at, at Philly last year, that's when you and I raised our yes. eyebrows because he went six of nine for 113 with a touchdown and no interceptions. Right. The first start came when guess who had COVID right. <laughs> after he was <laughs> immunized, yeah, right? Exactly. Okay, so Aaron Rodgers is out with COVID, so he got the one start. We're going back two years ago mm -hmm. at Kansas City in week nine. The final score was only 13 to seven, so he managed only seven points. He went 19 to 34 for 190, touchdown and an interception. The QBR was low of 33. He, he wasn't bad, bad, but he wasn't great, right. but it was his first start against a really good, good team, team on the road on the road at Arrowhead where you've played many, yeah. many yeah. games. Okay, so <laughs> the point was that Andy Reid couldn't remember Jordan Love, yeah. and he really got stuck. Yeah. Where, like, who's that, he said. I'm, I'm trying to remember Jordan Love. Well, it's not the greatest sign right. that the guy now regarded as the best coach, the, <laughs> the, the most creative right. offensive mind in pro football. Right can't remember the other quarterback. Well, it's not like he's going to study the other quarterback right. during the week because right. he's going to study the defense. I mean, and Skip, these, these guys, they head down so long. That's why when people ask Coach Belichick, well, you know about this, he's like, who, what? Yeah. These, man, they're spending 100 hours of the week breaking down tape and trying to get ready for the game. Of the other Of, of the uh, opponent. Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to do what's in the best interest, especially now, Skip, we're studying game tape looking at college, uh, uh, guys that's coming out of college, and free agents. So the last thing that man's thinking about is, is, is Jordan Love. Okay, but usually when you're the head football coach, 
you just you just have an awareness of oh they're starting the man, kid against us man. and you're watching the game and you're thinking hmm man not bad not great whatever you're thinking man and the thing about lunch you say man them burgers <laughs> I, think yeah, them, I, I think I think I think I'm ready I for know. lunch already you okay. ain't think about no Jordan Love skill all right so if I'm Jordan Love. I would take that a little personally. Yeah. I would be motivated by that. Oh, you don't even know who I am? Yeah. I'll, I'll show you next year. I still have a pretty good feeling about Jordan Love. Yes. For their sake, and maybe because I'm rooting against Aaron Rodgers, I, I'm hoping that, that he's going to be pretty to very good. Yes. Is he going to be Aaron Rodgers? Well, it's, it's going to be pretty rough to yeah. be Aaron Rodgers or Brett Favre, <laughs> right? Yeah. But can they get by with him? Can they be yeah. pretty good with him? Yes, they can. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'm I'm going to root for them in that regard, which brings me to the Jets. This guy, Aaron Bleepin' Rogers, keeps <laughs> revealing himself, exposing himself to be this all-time classic media manipulating, blame deflecting finger pointer, and now at 39 years of age, he's coming off his worst year. He's coming off three straight home playoff losses. I'm including Detroit as a quote unquote playoff game at the end of the year because it was for the playoffs. Right. Are you sure what you're getting? Because you're going to owe him, unless you can negotiate this down, $59 million. Well, obviously, you haven't had a quarterback to speak of since Joe Namath back in the yeah. late 60s, early 70s. Keto right? Bryant had some good years. Okay, it was decent, but I'm talking about Broadway Joe Namath, right? Not that kind of, not, not of that stature. Not of this stature. Are you sure you're getting that guy? And are you sure you want to put up with his as you say, bull job, because it's going to be a you know bunch of bull jobs. You know it's coming, Skip. Yep. That, that's who he is. That's what he okay. is. Well, I my warning to the Jets is be careful what you wish for. Right. I'm not going to condemn the Jets for taking the plunge because you've got a good football team in yes. place everywhere except the position on the right. football field. So is it worth taking the plunge even yeah. for one year just to see if if – Miracles can happen. Lightning can strike, and the 39-year-old can revert back to being a 29-year-old for one year, with a chip on his shoulder pads to show those Green Bay Packers how wrong they were to run him out of town. Maybe, but I just don't trust him. I don't trust him on the field. I don't trust him off the field. Oh, well, Skip, they didn't run him out of town. You, you basically drove yourself out of town. Yeah. Well, he did. No, yeah. I, I got it. They were calling you, saying what you know. Aaron, if you're interested in coming yeah. back, we'd love to have yeah, you. But, but his mentality is going to be, they dump me, okay? His mentality is, you're not begging. And I think they were out of the begging business. They That's what it begging. looks like to me. They were done begging you yeah, to I stay. I agree. I agree with that, okay? So I just say good luck, Jets, because I wouldn't want to have to put up with him, even though I was willing to if they would have taken Dak off our hands straight <laughs> up for Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> right. I would do that deal. <laughs> Looks a little bit like the Jets are worried, too, about him potentially retiring before that contract ends. That's another sticking point right now in those negotiations. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Subscribe here to get the very latest from Skip and Shannon. Plus, go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.